Good morning and welcome to the FP Markets Market Update. Um, it is Tuesday, the 5th of October, um, and we're back in the office here in Sydney after a, a day off, or half a day off really. Um, but markets took a little bit of a pounding over the last few days, Wall Street leading the way again. And uh, um, in Asia here, we've seen some of the indices also taking a bit of a hit. ASX 200 here, next door down the road to us. Um, actually, it's just recovered a bit. It was nearly and, and just over one percent down at one point on the day back to only half a percent down but still fairly significant as you can see um, actually this is the s p chart i'll bring up the asx chart here as you can see here it, it's dipping beneath this sort of 7200 mark and it, it does feel like we're in a little bit of a tail off now as, as we're coming out of uh, the pandemic globally fears across the uh, investor space really on inflation as has been you know we've been having that battle uh, for a long time now, even inflation fears against um, stimulus and markets still powering to the top side. But certainly from that chart there on the ASX, we sort of feel like we've dribbled off a bit. And and that's that's true as well with some of the uh, bigger indexes. Obviously, this is the S&P that I mentioned before. Um, sort of found a little bit of support around this sort of 4,300 mark, but um, it does feel like it's just come off the top a bit at the moment. This is translated into a little bit of dollar strength. We've seen dollar coming off over the last few sessions had a real big move to the top side uh, last Thursday and, and potentially more moves coming up this week as well. Um, I'll dive into that a little bit later. I'll just um, just as, as we move through looking at these, there are um, it, it is another interesting week. It's the first week of the month. So obviously um, the big end of the week comes with non-farm payrolls. Uh, we've already had some OPEC meetings and they've sort of reinforced um, reinforced their current um, production schedules, which has led to a little bit of a, a trip higher for the uh, for the black gold. And as you can see here, look, topped out high just yesterday above $78 a barrel above the previous high. So we've sort of broken higher again in uh, in oil. Um, that's led to sort of those increased inflation fears as well across the across the uh, across the whole trading world really um, and investors are concerned when we start to see these moves as we said I think we touched on it um, just last week that it, it's only a f it's only like four or five weeks ago that we were down under $62 a barrel um, and now sort of shooting to new highs on the on the year um, we've had the RBA um, over here in in Australia once again they failed to excite us it's not the first time for long-term suffering Aussie Aussie traders um, a few of the things like they feel that that um, current conditions are supportive. Um, they're not seeing too much in wage of uh, wage inflation, inflation across the board yet. Um, so as you can see here, key key conditions there, rate rise will not be met. Conditions for a rate rise will not be met before 2024. I, I know there's a lot of people out there um, that do beg to differ. Um, and are slightly more bullish and, and, a, and a little bit more hawkish, therefore, on the Australian economy. Um, certainly, um, next week is going to be a big sign for us where we uh, we hit, I think, our second Freedom Day and, and open up again. So Aussie traders will be keeping on that. ASX as well could get a bit of a shot in the arm um, as things start to open up again. But RBA is pretty much sticking to their guns. Um, later in the week, as said potential some big tier one events coming out, ISM services, PMI out of the US, um, ADP non-farm payroll, I and mean, it all caps up, off with a big non-farm payroll at the end of the week. Uh, we have got some central bankers talking as well. Um, I suppose can't miss out our cousins from over the ditch. Let's just skip over to my Kiwi chart. Um, RBNZ is, uh, it is out tomorrow um, as well. So keep an eye on those. They have been known to be a little bit ahead of their game sometimes. Um, the RBNZ. So, so that can translate to a little bit of and quite a lot of volatility. Um, expectations are that they will, um, they may even be looking for that 25, um, 25 basis point height there. So that comes in, it could, could see the, could see the Kiwi sort of move up and, and of special interest to, to a lot of the Kiwi traders. We're only sort of 460 points off parity at the magic level in Aussie Kiwi. Um, if we do start to see a much more hawkish um, and, and rate, rate rises from the RBNZ, especially against a very staid and moribund RBA, then maybe we do see that parity party in the, uh, in the cross Tasman cross. Um, so interesting interest, a lot of interest there to see where we go. Um, and we'll take it from there.
Um, as I said, probably still the biggest uh, event at the end of our week, non-farm payrolls. Changes expected to come in around 490, but it has been a very volatile event recently. Obviously, everything that's been going on in the States, st different states and, and the whole economy coming out of pandemic, numbers are flying around a bit. Um, Obviously, if we see much, much higher numbers than expected, then that adds to that inflationary concerns that we've got, adds to maybe some more topside in things like the US uh, treasuries. They did drop off. They're around about just underneath 150 again, um, topping out sort of uh, highs around 156, 157. Um, keep an eye on that. Another move to the topside here could see the currency start to uh, – well, the, the US currency obviously start to gain some ground um, and, and some of the others – losing a little bit big volatility still this is cable that i've moved over to now we bounced really well off of that sort of one just above the 134 level a couple of little little bits of support coming in there all the way up to a couple of big figures there 136.50 but just tracking off a little bit um today in the asian trade and, and london's coming in soon so we'll see how that takes things and and starts to move move them forward. Um, looking over to the euro, still on the longer term chart, I think you'd say the euro's on the back foot. A little bit of a move to the downside as well today. That's a pretty short term trend, not trend line we've got in there. Clearly, a little bit of a line down there, 115.60, couple of bases there. That'll be the next target for the bears um, on the downside. Dolly yen, some great volatility in dolly yen over the last um and you can see dollars on the ascendancy it just had a little spike up but i think as we're moving into this london open um peaked out at 112 we're a big figure lower now but it's had that awesome move from sort of nearly 109 all the way up to 112 um plenty of trading conditions out there um and that people are looking at starting to look at the dolly yen it's been pretty quiet i mean the, a lot of dolly yen trades have been say it'd be quiet for a year or two really relative to some of the other currencies but certainly the moves we've seen over over the last month or last um, few weeks definitely enticing people back to to commit more of their portfolio to that pair um dollar cad as i said maybe not got the the strength of move that you'd expect having uh, oil broken to new highs so some cad buyers certainly floating around the market um did find a little support at 125.50. Um, we're only 70 points above that at the moment. So looking for that level on the downside. And, and to me, it's sort of clear up to 128.50. Um, we'll probably just get some intraday trading if, if we drop back into that range. Um, Swissy, um, as you can see here, sort of mirroring that move that we've seen in the Euro. Euro Swiss dropped off. Um, that's had a bit of a hit as well down to just coming in there, that support line on, on this chart, 107.44. So I think in conclusion, there's plenty going on, plenty of news hitting the market, plenty of opinions. Keep an eye on what's going on, on in China. Um, over here in the Asia Pacific, obviously, we, we, we're keeping a very close eye on things. Evergrande, obviously, a big story. We've had them banning cryptos again, but this from a more concerted um, point of view from a regulatory standpoint. Um, that's obviously not the uh, not the crypto space for a while last week. Um, moving moving across into sort of the northern hemisphere side of things, a little bit more central bank action and, and more data coming out this week. That data comes out. A lot of these central banks are looking for confirmation that they're seeing their economies coming out of pandemic and recovering. That starts to get people's thinking a little bit more on hawkish cycles. Inflation as well, concerns, as I said, that you know, once again, that oil seems to be sticking out to a lot of people. Um, but to me, it means that there's much more volatility out there. There's much more opportunities for trading. So um, certainly across the currencies, I think we're going to see a little bit more coming through um, and certainly across the stock markets as well. So um, thanks very much for tuning in today, guys. Hope you have a cracking day's trading. If you need anything from us at FP Markets, please contact, contact us in the usual way. Thanks very much and have a great day ahead. Cheers.